The following is a class on the Srimad Bhagavatam. First Canto, Third Chapter, Text Number 20, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on the 25th of September, 1972 <laughs> Bhrigupati Rupa Jaya Jagadisa Hare. So Bhrigupati, Brahma Druham, the administrator class, uh, the politicians, they must obey the order of the Brahmanas. That is Vedic culture. Therefore, although there was monarchy, king, one king, no democracy, but because the king would follow the instruction of learned sages and brahmin, they would rule over the country very nicely. Take for example, if your president takes our advice how to rule, then everything will be very nice. Of course, we shall immediately ask the president to stop the slaughterhouse. But it is very difficult. You see, neither the president is ready. Even if he is ready, he cannot do. Everything is constitutional. So, Brahmadruhan, the society must be Brahmanic. Vedic culture means to create every person a Brahmana, not to keep him Shudra. Of course, in the modern education system, the purpose is to elevate the general people. But they do not know how to elevate. Therefore, there is so much trouble. The elevation should be, there must be some purpose, end. What purpose education is being given? It is purposeless education. Mostly, at the present moment, education means to give facility for sense gratification. That's all. Boys and girls in the school and colleges, just from the very beginning, they are given all liberty for such life. So, this is not education. Education means to lead the people gradually to Krishna consciousness. That is education. God consciousness. Because human life, this is the only life. There are eight million four hundred thousand species of life. This human form of life is the only opportunity to understand God. Cats, dogs, even demigods, they also, because their opulence, sense gratification is so great that they have no time. That that here in this world also, those who are too rich, they are simply after sense that we use. They have no time to understand Krishna consciousness. So to become too much materially opulent means there is another danger. Bhaktivana Thakur has said, therefore, Jaravidyasava Mayar Bhayuha, the expansion of material advancement, Material advancement means expanding the sense gratificatory process. That is material. The more you expand how to satisfy your senses, that is material. And the more you expand how to satisfy Krishna, that is spiritual. That is the difference between material and spiritual. It does not mean that material is strong, material and spiritual means it becomes zero. They are thinking like that, sunnavādi. They think spiritual means just the opposite number of material. So material we have got variegated in solid, 
experience, so make it zero. And that is not spiritual. That is simply negation. That philosophy is Buddha philosophy. That you are suffering from some disease, painful, so I cut your throat. That's all. Everything finished. No more suffering. Zero. Make it zero. No. The process should be, if you are diseased, if you are suffering, the suffering should be stopped, not that to kill you, to stop the suffering. No. That is our pleasure. We are changing. Why one is suffering? He is suffering for indulging in sense gratification. Uh, we are educating people that you enjoy your senses through Krishna. Through Krishna. You like to dance. Yes, you dance through Krishna. You want to eat nice. You eat through Krishna. You want to sing. You sing through Krishna. You want to paint. You paint through Krishna. This is our idea. Not directly for my sense gratification. I want to paint nice picture. So, because I want to my sense gratification, now painting has become a, a several logs, especially in your country. What is that? Painting? Uh, that means the uh, tendency for making it zero. Sunlabhādi. We say, you have got taste for painting, you are a nice painter, just paint Radha Krishna. You see how nice it is. So painting is not to be stopped. It is simply diverted for Krishna. That is Krishna consciousness movement. We don't want to kill, but we simply divert to Krishna. Purification, that is. If you don't divert your attention to Krishna, then more and more you will become sinful and everything will be polluted. So that was being observed formally. As soon as there was some discrepancy in the Brahminical culture, Brahminical culture means to aim up advancement of civilization is spiritual realization, self-realization. Vishnu, ultimately Lord Vishnu, the Supreme Personality of God. That is the epigraphy, that is a special chance for the human being. This chance is not for any other living being. So, for this purpose there are so many rules and regulations Manushangita, the social system, the political system, the spiritual system, so many things, everything chopped with the aim how to understand Brahma. Brahma jnana titi Brahman. As soon as one understands what is Brahma, Parabrahma, Krishna, Krishna is Parabrahma, then his life is perfect. That was the aim. So, actually, the administrators, the Brahmins, sages, they give that verdict that, uh, my dear king, you rule over the country in this fashion. He believed that. So when the kings became sensuous, they thought that the kingdom is their father's property, uh, they haven't got to do anything with the people, they can employ the taxes for sense gratification as it is going on now. Whatever taxes are levied, they are divided among the government servants, that's all. You don't get any benefit. You are simply paid to pay tax, that's all. You don't get any benefit. There is everywhere the modern government. So such thing happens because this material world is such that even if you make very nice arrangement, it will deteriorate, the time factor. So sometimes when it happens so, 
that the administrators, Nipan, the king, were neglectful in their proper duty. So it was so much aggravated at that time, Jamadagni, Bhrigupati, he took the matter, took his soul. He is Brahman. But to chastise these irresponsible kings, he killed them seven into three times, twenty-one times. And they found history, it appeared that many of the Kshatriyas, they left India and they came to this part of the world. And so far, my guess is concerned, you Europeans, uh, Americans, you belong to that Kshatriya family, descendant. But because you are separated directly from the Vedic culture, now you have become different. Now again that Vedic culture has come to your service, take advantage of it. So one has to take this Vedic culture to make his life perfect. Of course, formerly the Brahmins were so strong that they did not like to govern directly. They used to live in the forest, cultivating spiritual knowledge, writing books. They had no interest in taking charge of government. No. They never stood for election. There is no election. So, khatriya rudhiya. So he purified this art, the surface of the art, by washing it by the blood of this chhatriya. This is the incarnation of Jamadagni or Parasurama. Some of the sages, saintly persons are still living. Still living. They are trikalagga. They have no past, present, future. When this whole universe will be annihilated, then they will go to Vaikuntha, or spiritual world, personality. So Parsuram, Vasudev, many others, they are supposed to be still living. What is the purport? The Kshatriyas, or the administrative class of men, are expected to rule the planet by the direction of the intelligent class of men, who give direction to the rulers in terms of the standard shastras, or the books of revealed knowledge. The rulers carry on the administration according to that direction. Whenever there is disobedience on the part of the Kshatriyas or the administrative class against the orders of the learned and intelligent Brahmins, the administrators are removed by force from the posts and arrangements is made for better administration. Yes, that was the custom. Not that by removing the king from the throne or killing the king, the Brahmanas and the sages would come there to sit down on the throne. No. His son will be given chance to become king. The descendant was picked up and they would take charge of the minor king, advise him, but they will never touch the throne. There, there are many instances, just like Ben Maharaj, he became too much atheistic. He was also killed by the Brahmins and the sages. Then his son, Prithu Maharaj, became king and he was a good administrator. Uh, in this way, things were going on. So uh, the aim was how to make people happy by enlightening them in spiritual knowledge, not that how to make better arrangement for eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. That was also going on. But the main purpose of life was Brahminical culture. Brahmadruha, when the kings were neglectful to see that the people are being enlightened about spiritual self-realization, that was good administration. Without that aim, no nation can become happy, no community can become happy. So the responsibility was that time to the administrator, they would see that everyone, every Brahmin is following the rules and regulations of a Brahmin. Every Kshatriya is following the rules and regulations of Kshatriya. Vaisa, Sudra. And nobody can interfere the other's business. Everyone is employed in his own business. And tax, that the Brahmin had to pay, no tax. Only 
Kshatriyas, they are tax collector. So only, and Sudra also, they, they had no property, therefore there was no tax. Only the Vaisya class, protected class, they had to pay tax. And that tax also was very simple. There was no encroachment. You simply give one-fourth of your profit to the government. That's all. No more tax. The sale tax, this tax, income tax, excise tax, this tax, simply tax, tax, tax. No. Not like that. Whatever he has got, profit. Got means whatever profit he has made. If he has no profit, there is no tax. That was the government system. So how he'll pay if he has not made any profit this year? Just like we are hearing, there is no good monsoon in India this year. So there will be no very much good production. But if there is no good production, the government should not levy any tax. But now at the present moment, you go to hell, but you must pay the tax, and we divide the tax among ourselves. That's all. Finish. Or we employ the taxes for fighting, for declaring war, that's all. So at the present moment we are any very, very deplorable condition, no good government. Simply by changing by so-called parties, the government cannot improve. The government can improve when there are Krishna conscious persons. So if someday you as a turn all the people Krishna conscious, then you become president. Thank you very much.